we are already creating a data entry form and uh, now we shall add support for the date selector so far we have displayed only the email box but a lot of work has already been done like client side validation server side validation they are all working fine now uh, we shall add the text box for date of birth let us see how to proceed so this is we shall add another tr to it and begin to add so uh, we have quickly typed it date of birth label html dot text box for x goes to date of birth this text box will be bound to the date of birth field and then this will be the validator let us run it see the deficiencies and then we'll correct them in its simplest form it can be just a normal text box with the date field being bound to the properties of the text box and the validator there okay let us however run it and see what is the output this is the form that we get and click on save the validator is firing uh, we shall type an email address to keep the things simple now this is the only one that is not validating I can type something 24 hyphen 2000 and click save field date of birth must be a date now it has certain problems now one is calendar control is required it would be ideal if somebody clicks this and a calendar control pops up this is one thing that we need the second thing is that this calendar this date must be accepting the Indian format and then any validation should occur and then there is a slight third thing also since this is date of birth we might want that the date of birth be in a certain range so that only valid values are possible for that if you remember we uh, on the validation uh, we had uh, left a space for a remote so that the validation occurs in the JSON format in the annotations we had left we had created a space for the remote function on for the JSON call so two or three things are there which this calendar is seriously lacking Uh, which this date of birth text box is seriously lacking let us now uh, begin to address them one by one we shall first of all begin by addressing the calendar issue should th so that when somebody clicks into this text box a calendar should pop up how do we do that for that we can have a look at our bundle config file what it has to offer us there is one interesting jQuery include that is the jQuery UI UI is the user interface so this is the one that contains useful controls that can be used on a HTML form so jQuery UI can be added what will it include it will include jQuery hyphen UI version dot JS and yes it is the jQuery UI version whatever is the current version it is the jQuery UI file that it will include for us so this is one thing we have to add secondly the calendar won't work without the CSS files also so let us scroll down and see whether we have yes we have the CSS files also here if you see this one this is datepicker.css 
So to format the date picker, we'll need the CSS file and it is there in our list. So clearly this means that this style bundle must be included as well. We have no issues if uh, the others are also added by this. No problems at all. Sometimes they depend on each other also. So we need to include two bundles. One is this style bundle and the other is the UI script bundle. Now here you can uh, take note of one thing that this calendar won't be shown on every page. It appears on one page. Maybe if you have 10 pages, it will appear on one or two entry forms and not everywhere. So there is no point in including all these CSS files and all this G UI uh, JavaScript file on every page that our website shows. So we can put some conditional inclusion there so that it is included only when uh, you uh, show a data entry form not always. So let us have a look at our layout file. If we look closely at our layout file, then there is a render section p uh, a render section uh, function called scripts required false. So this means you can put all your this. Uh, page specific javascript code into the scripts section. If I now make a scripts section on my form where that calendar is there and inside that script section I uh, write my these uh, jquery bundles and all then they will get included only when the scripts tag is there when the scripts section is there. So uh, my every page will not include it and I can make use of this that has been attached to my layout by the Visual Studio. This means I will go back to my index.cshtml, create a scripts section and put all the bundles there. Not every page is going to have that scripts section so that that bundle will only be included if uh, this index page is coming there. And then there is another thing also since the bundle is fairly standard. So if you want to use accordion on some other page or maybe buttons, special buttons on some other page, you can create a uh, scripts section on that page. If two or four extra files are added that won't matter because probably they are related also many times. So uh, this is what we shall make use of now. Coming back to our index.cshtml, here we'll make a space here and create a section called scripts. And now we can include our bundles here so that they'll be included into this only this page. So they'll be included into the layout page only when this page is there. So this trick is very useful and we have made use of the section at, uh, section um, block here. So our jQuery UI is included into the scripts bundle, uh, scripts uh, section here. Now we have to put our CSS files also. Let us come back to our layout page. And uh, why don't we create a section here for the special styles. CSS files, those CSS are special files, so I can add a add the rate render section. I'll call it styles comma false. So uh, on the lines of this uh, scripts. I can now include a styles section also so that this one is included if it is there. And I can similarly put a section here. I'll write at the rate section styles 
and I can put the bundle for my CSS files here. So this is my bundle for the CSS files that are related required for this UI jQuery. So this is a very handy uh, method of including uh, code that runs on a condition. So this code will only run if uh, styles section are there on a page and it will be included in the layout only if a page wants them to be included. So this will enlighten your um, page, ultimate page that will be rendered. Okay. This is about the CSS and jQuery UI files. Now we have to actually render the picker, date picker. For that we'll have to include the JS code here and let us see what it will be. From the documentation this is the code that we need to enter. We are entering it into the scripts section. Creating a script tag here jQuery function dollar dollar hash date picker dot date picker date format. This is coming straight from documentation. There should be a text box input text box with ID equal to date picker. So it should have an ID equal to date picker. One thing. Then the date format is double D hyphen M hyphen. This one will actually render 24 sep 2014. So this is from documentation that if you write two D's they'll format it into a date like this. Uh, it will be 0, 6 and not 6 if only one digit is there. So two D's are for double. Capital M will make it abbreviated to first three English characters of the word. Double Y will put the date in uh, century format. If you do not have to worry about internationalization, this code will be just sufficient, it will work. But uh, as per further research that I did, I find that certain additional code has to be written so that it works well for the Indian format. So we are now going to include that code also, you can have a look at that. This is the code that is the minimal code as per documentation, but uh, there is some flaw or you can say some bug in the original code. So a method called for date has to be overridden here. So some blog recommended it and uh, it works fine. Dollar dot validator dot add method function value. So this is the code that you can just have a look at. If you see it fixes between the date picker and the opening tag. This is the one that you have to add. So if you type it, be careful about these brackets. This one will close somewhere here and this one matches this one, this one matches this one, then there is a catch and this bracket is for this. So this is basically add method date followed by the function that is inline function that has been written. So this code will ensure that it works for the Indian format. This one will work for the Indian, British. So these formats are not supported in the original jQuery module. So if we do this workaround then things become better. Okay. Coming down to this dollar hash date picker. Now this date picker will show if my text box has this ID called date picker. How do I do that? So this is the text box for the date of birth. I'll explore other arguments of this comma. Uh, I'll explore then this is a second argument can be a format the format in which I want uh, my um, this text box to behave for the date picker will behave for this format so I'll add that format here it is 0 colon dd if you remember this is the C sharp version of that uh, 14 sep 
2014. This is the C sharp version of that. 0 colon D D double D triple M and then Y Y Y Y. So we have specified the format. And finally, the question is how to set ID for this one. This one will actually render a tag like this. Input type is equal to text. And uh, maybe here name is equal to date of birth. So that it matches with the property. Now the issue is how to set any other attribute. These two will be set because of uh, uh, these. This will be set because of text box, and this name will be set because the property it re relates to his date of birth. But what about other attributes? Say I want to set an attribute for ID is equal to DTP. Whatever I want to add this ID as. How to set other attributes? And maybe also sometimes you might want to add another attribute for style or a CSS class. You might want to add an attribute for ID. Then you might want to add for the CSS class. Class is equal to something. ID is equal to something. And maybe inline style. Style is equal to something. How do you add other attributes? For this, there is a third argument that can be passed to the text box for function and you can pass an anonymous object to it. A dynamic object to it can be passed and that will uh, set these styles, these, uh, these attributes on the input element that is being generated. So third argument is since it is a dynamic we'll write new so be careful about first of all closing this. Then this object should not be there. It always gets typed here. So here I'll create a dynamic id is equal to. So what is this id to be? Date picker without the hash. So I'll write date picker. So my this will give this will create that id attribute having the value of date picker. If I want to include more, I can write class is equal to in double quotes, whatever I want. So since we are not requiring it in this case. So this one uh, fixes everything now. My uh, CSS, JavaScript files and the ID, they are all in place. If I run it, my uh, this uh, date of birth should start working. Okay, let us run it now. Okay, here is the output. Click on save and the required it falls. Okay, let us add a valid email because this has already been tested. So, so as at the moment I click into this, a calendar pops up. I can pick up a date date of birth is required field and I can pick up a date click on save and uh, it is saved but uh, this is the, the issue why is this not working is because if you remember we had left a annotation property there with the remote so unless we specify that this date will not work correctly so we have to wait till then otherwise formatting etc is coming correctly let us now go to add that uh, remote uh, uh, property there. Uh, let us have a look at our, we had added it somewhere here, tbl registration dot cs, double click this one. So this is one thing that we had left out at that stage, validate birth date home. So we had not, we haven't yet added a validate birth date uh, function to the home controller. So we'll add that first and then we'll come back to verify it. So we can begin to write that public JSON result validate birth date, date time, date of birth. So if we come to our annotation file, the remote is validate birth date 
inside the home controller and the property is date of birth so we are having this parameter matching that property and JSON result is what is to be returned since this is an AJAX type of uh, validation this is the same function let us write its body return JSON true JSON request behavior dot allow get since this will be a get request immediately it will be get request and we must write allow get for security reasons JSON true means that the validation succeeded we can write now in what case will it fail if date of birth exceeds now then we can say it fails and we can return JSON bad date the remaining else thing remains same so it's true or bad date true means it will be treated as ok and bad date will act as your validation message so now we can try running our code to see whether it works here it is ok write uh, correct email first now let us type a bad date 28th September click on save and it fires this has just fired without any postback uh, that is it is a JSON based no postback occurred here you can see there is no postback occurring here now let us correct this to something in the past and now let us click on save and you will see that it posted back and works fine so our date of birth is now working fine it is in place so we can now revise the various steps that we took first of all we added this tr for date of birth specified what property and then later on we added a format for the date and gave an id to this so that date picker can link to this one then then we went on to our index.cshtml there we included the ui files and the css files CSS was put into a style section and scripts section was used by jQuery UI and some code related to date picker was added here. These two things were added here and then we made slight modification into our layout file for these styles because styles is not added there by default. Scripts is added there. This is our layout file. Let me have a look at the layout file. This is the layout file scripts is added by default towards the end we made use of this one for conditional inclusion and we then added one render section for styles at the top so that our styles conditional styles they get incorporated into the head tag then after having done this uh, we came back to our home controller to include a JSON result for validate birth date so that this can be validated in just real time based on the jQuery, uh, JSON and uh, AJAX calls and the interesting thing was that uh, we included we, we return that we return true for if the validation succeeds and any error message in case we uh, want it to fail off so this is one of the most interesting things that you have seen that with very very little C sharp code we are getting so many things get done in this case. This all is occurring behind back the end plumbing is being done by the Visual Studio. So uh, with this we'll now next in the next lecture proceed on to add more fields to it and see the form as it gets completed. Thanks.